Hey, hey everyone. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to manage multiple cameras this evening. I haven't got quite got this figured out yet, and I need to because it's like wine 30 here, so I like to have a little bit to drink <laughs> in the evening to kind of celebrate the day. And I gotta like figure out how to like hold all these cameras at once. But anyway, let's talk coloring resin. Okay, let's do that. So I've gotten a bunch of questions here recently. Oh dear goodness, here, hold on, let me fix fix Facebook for a sec. Hold tight, everybody, hold tight. Oh my gosh, it's like, <laughs> there we go. so everybody can see me. Hopefully this works, okay. Everybody on Facebook's like, I'm gonna get motion sick here in a minute. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, um, I should probably have a little more wine first. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about coloring your resin. I've had a few questions recently about coloring resin and what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't do and what you can get away with and what you can't. And so let's talk, let's talk for a few seconds about coloring resin. So you've got a resin you want to color it, how are you going to go about doing that? So the best advice I can give you right away to start is to use colorants designed specifically for the resin you're using. Okay. And two reasons for that. Reason number one is that if you're using brand X's resin and brand X recommends these colorants for resin, you can be assured a, that it's going to cure, and B, that it's going to cure the way you expect, meaning the color is hopefully going to turn out the way that you're expecting it to. Okay. So this really is important too. If you are looking to, um, recreate a piece several times or like, I know when I was doing a line of wholesale resin jewelry and I would go to wholesale shows and a shop owner would be like, okay, great. I need four blue and I need six red and I need, you know, eight yellow, you know, that, person needed to be pretty well assured that the color they were seeing up on the sample boards were the color they were going to get. So that's another really um, nice reason to use colorants specifically designed for resin. Okay, so let's say you want to try something a little out there, a little different. So maybe the next thing is you want to try, okay, well, can you use brand X resin and brand Y colorants? And so the answer I would give you is Yes, with a little asterisk and the little asterisk being whenever I've done that, I've never had any curing problems. The problem I have had though is sometimes because the, the colorants are specifically formulated to color the resins that you're working with or that particular brand's resin is sometimes the colors won't come through exactly like what you were expecting. Okay. So if you guys have ever gotten a resin and you notice that the hardener's a little yellow, okay, unfortunately that's just one of the things with, with resin hardeners, they can have that yellow tint to it. So in order to combat that, sometimes manufacturers will put a blue coloring into the epoxy part. And so when you put the, the yellow and the blue together, you get clear, okay? Don't ask me why that happens, but it does. And so sometimes I have run into problems where if you're using some of their brands, green or yellow or blue and you put it in a different brand's resin, you might get a funky green or yellow or blue on the other side. So you may not necessarily get the color you were expecting. So, you know, when in doubt, always, of course, just, you know, do a couple of test pieces, but, but, you know, in terms of curing, never had that problem. Um, it's only specifically been, you know, trying to recreate the color that I thought I was going to get. Okay. All right. So you've decided, okay, well maybe I want to try some other really cool stuff in resin. And that's like one of the, the neat things that I would totally encourage you to do. I mean, what's the fun of resin if you can't like try and push it to the limit, right? Okay. So if you want to try something else to color your resin, a few rules to keep in mind. Rule number one, try and use as little of it as possible. Okay. So basically if you want to try something, um, and I'll get, to more of this in a minute, you want to try whatever substance, try and use as little of it as possible to color your resin and get the effect you want. Okay. 
Suggestion number two, if you are going to color your resin, make sure whatever that coloring is is as dry as possible, if, that, if that's even an option. So for example, something like eyeshadow, or I've also done spices for my kitchen cabinet. Um, you know, they're, they're powders, but you know, obviously make sure they're dry, okay? Rule number three, try and learn a little something about the resin you're working with before you try and color it. So for example, epoxies are pretty forgiving about colorants. Polyurethanes, no, not so much. So, so something you can, you know, you might ordinarily um, use to color an epoxy and have really great results may not work with a polyurethane. Polyurethanes are incredibly moisture sensitive. So those are ones that, um, you know, I kind of, you know, discourage you from using something non-traditional to color it, to, to color it. Um, how will you know if it's not gonna work? Oh, you'll know right away with the polyurethane because the stuff foams up like you got like, you know, root beer and the just foaming and bubbling and everything like that, okay. So if you want to try some stuff that aren't resin colorants to color your resin, here's a few suggestions. Number one, acrylic paint, okay? Um, acrylic paints, generally I would tell you to go no more than one part paint to one or to 10 parts mixed resin. Use even less if you can, okay? Um, suggestion number two is that generally when it comes to acrylic paints, you get what you pay for. So the reason some acrylic paints are inexpensive is because they've got a lot of water in them. Well, one of the problems with water is that water and resin don't really get along. Even epoxies don't really like water, okay? So that's why sometimes when you use acrylic paints, your resin cures rubbery or it's really bendy or it may not even cure at all. So if you want to try acrylic paints, you know, splurge a little and maybe spend a little more on the paints that cost more because they're more concentrated. You're gonna get more pigment or, or um, you know, more color in the same amount of colorant than what you would in a cheap acrylic paint. Although a little side note here, I would tell you that a really good acrylic paint pigments are about as expensive as resin colorant. So you're not necessarily gonna save yourself any money. Um, it's just if you, if you find something you like and you don't want to have to maybe reproduce it. Okay. Um, Alcohol-based colors will also work to color resin. Also a little asterisk there in that some manufacturers' alcohol-based colors will not keep their color in resin. And um, so if you, if like you're trying to do resin petries or maybe you just, you want a transparent color or something like that, the, the alcohol-based colors that are specifically designed for resin are your best bet. I have used some brands that are not meant to color resin and I've had problems with, especially the pink and purple tones, staying pink and purple in the resin. They typically just disappear, kind of this really weird thing that nobody can seem to explain to me why. So you've got acrylic paints, you've got, um, you, you've got the alcohol-based colors, you can do powders, you know, like Micah's eyeshadows, you know, cut, like the, you know, the, the sparkly cosmetics, glitters of course, um, and have some really neat stuff there. I've done spices. I've done um, sidewalk chalk. I've done scraped out like the powders out of watercolor palettes. Um, I'll tell you what does not work, or at least has not worked for me, oil paints. Okay, oil paints, it just kind of makes a globby mess with your resin. Um, nail polish, nail polish just turns it this, turns your resin this ugly amber. Um, I haven't had that work. Um, what else hasn't worked? Um, I've had some uh, mixed results using commercial latex paint like if you've got a color of latex paint that you've used to say you know paint your bedroom or you know paint a room or something um, sometimes those work sometimes those don't don't necessarily have an explanation why that is but um, that's just been my experience so anyway if you are interested in, in trying some resin colorants we do have some in our store you can head over to shop.resinobsession.com we've got a whole bunch of liquid colorants and powder colorants that are um, you know, meant for you to have success in resin. So I see uh, uh, several of you have joined in this evening. Um, before I hop off here this evening, any questions or anything, um, any comments, anybody want to share their experience using um, funky stuff to color resin? So, okay. Hey, Pamela. Hey, Samantha. I see some other people too. I see a bunch of waves. Okay. All right, everyone. Okay, well, if you've got some questions later, by all means, you know, 
um, send them over or this will be um, saved to our Facebook page so you can um, hang out there as well and um, share your questions. So anyway, happy success. And the last bit of advice I can give you, <laughs> um, if you're anything like me and you have forgotten what you had for breakfast, if you go and you start testing and you're like, oh, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try this, and I'm this, we're gonna see if this works, write it down, get a journal, or put a note to yourself in your phone because if you're like me, you try this stuff and then two days later when you go to demold it, you're like, oh, this is cool or oh my God, this didn't work, but you can't remember what you did. <laughs> so to this day, that's still how I have to handle things. So anyway, guys, thanks for hanging in with me this evening. I'm glad I could see so many of you and um, let's do this again soon. We'll talk later.